Hi everyone. So we are ready to move into uh, your section number three, uh, unit three. So this is where that we're going to start your uh, rotational motion information. So now uh, on the, from the beginning of the class, I mentioned about the uh, translational and rotational motion, right? So the kinematics that we discuss and also Newton's laws that we discuss are belong to uh, translational motion. I mean, we discuss under the translational motion, right? But in last section, we just started with the rotation that will be basically rotational force that we discussed, right? So now to get an understanding again in between translational and rotational motion in real life, actually any object that you throw Simple example is basketball. When you throw the basketball, that ball will keep rotate and then follow the parabolic path, right? So all the calculation we have done so far, we did not uh, consider the rotation to the motion, okay? But we discuss how the rotation will work. So rotation will be basically rotating around the center of mass point when you have a freedom of the ball to move and also the parabolic path is the translational motion. So that's the difference between rotation and translation but both will work together. Simple example, my phone, if I move this one in this way that is doing the translational motion, there is no rotation on this object. But if I want to move the object like this, then you do the translational and also you do in the rotation uh, at the same time, right? So that's the real situation. If I throw something, this is going to do translational and rotational motion together. Now, because of rotation, actually what will happen? So rotation will basically uh, slow down the motion. It will have some kind of rotation. Energy will take to make some rotation because of that, the uh, energy conservation that we have used also uh, assumption that there is no rotation, but uh, we have to include these all the informations into your uh, final uh, uh, conclusion. But anyway, so now uh, the chapter that we're going to discuss today uh, will be belong to your chapter number uh, 10 in uh, your textbook. Let me uh, project, uh, share my screen first. Okay, so now uh, we are working with the chapter 10 about the angular informations. Okay, so uh, this uh, section is a little uh, tricky that you understand how the rotation will work, but uh, very simple things that we're going to discuss very conceptually. So you will be able to uh, easily follow it. Okay, so now let's move into the uh, presentation. So uh, again, I have the drawing that doing the rotation and translation uh, to get an understanding. But important thing in here, uh, so when you talk about the kinematics, uh, we did the uh, some kind of parameters. What are the parameters we discuss? We talk about the uh, displacement. We talk about the velocity. We talk about the acceleration and the time. Those are the parameters that we discuss when you do the kinematics problem, right? So especially your physics class, you start with those parameters, right? After that, we go to the acceleration, force, torque, and those things, and momentum, and those things. But that is where that we started. Now we're going to start the same way for the angular quantities, because angular quantities also should have displacement, velocity, acceleration, but only different is, conceptually they are different, but in wording, we're going to just add the prefix, call it as angular in front of the displacement. Then we're going to talk about angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Okay, and momentum, you're going to use angular momentum. Okay, so force, you can say angular force or rotational force or the uh, torque. Okay, so now uh, we're going to build up this all the quantities uh, related to the uh, rotational motion in this section. And then we finally going to discuss about the rotational energy and also rotational 
moment, O angular moment. Basically, everything we discussed so far related to uh, your translational motion, we're going to summarize the things into the rotational motion by using new parameters. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, it's very important that, as I mentioned in earlier chapter also, rotation should have an axis, right? That means this object, I will be able to rotate this way. That is the rotational axis is this horizontal axis. That's what I'm doing here, right? So, but I can rotate this object uh, on this axis. That means it is this tilted axis, right? If I want to rotate this object, that will be my vertical axis on this box, right? So I will be able to rotate by using this axis. So I can do rotation like this, right? So now that means basically I should have a fixed axis for the rotation. All the calculation you are doing, the way that your object rotate is definitely depend on the axis of rotation. That is called it as the axis of rotation. Okay. So that means you need to identify when you have a body or the object, if it is rotating, which axis is going to rotate, right? So that is important. And the pivot point is another one that we call it as fixed point. That pivot point should go through that rotational axis uh, that you're going to use. Okay, okay so now uh, let's start with the uh, merry-go-round. Everybody know how the merry-go-round will work to understand the difference between rotation and the uh, translational motion. Okay, so now we'll say you are going to sit very close to the center. This is you, uh, you, and this is your friend. Friend is outer rim on the merry-go-round. So now when the merry-go-round rotate, what do you feel? What your friend feel? So feeling of rotation or feeling of moving yourself and uh, feeling of moving your friend, you're going to see this uh, differently. What is that differently means? You seems to be not rotating at all because you are rotating just on the same point, but your friend going to travel like a very big circle. That means that you're going to see that your friend is moving faster. But faster means what, what kind of faster? Is it faster means the greater linear velocity or translational velocity, or is it uh, rotation, right? So now this is very simple to understand. So now your faster means basically your velocity we are talking is the uh, translational velocity that will be the tangential velocity of the person. You remember that we talked about the circular motion earlier. So if you have an object that is moving on the circle, this object velocity, this tangential direction will be 2 phi r over period it will take. Distance divided by time. But if this is R, then if you are sitting almost close to here, then the velocity of you, this is your friend, this is you. So your velocity will be 2 phi R, very small R. I'm going to write it small R to get understanding. But both are taking the same period because the merry go round, if I sit on this axis here, here, or here, this everybody is moving together. There is no difference. This one is not moving separately from this one. This whole thing is going to rotate, right? So now what you need to understand, the velocity of your friend is definitely greater than your velocity because the radius is greater than your friend is traveling. So that is linear speed or tangential speed, or in this case, it is translational speed, okay? So now, in similar way, rotation. Rotation means basically uh, calculating uh, the uh, calculating the uh, displacement that will take the angular displacement that will take. That means if I stand in here, if I go to here, that means I travel ninety degrees. That means pi over two 
radians, right? We're going to use the radians for the rotation. That means if I start in here, travel to here, that means my uh, angle that I travel in radians is pi over two. So that is, we call it as angular displacement. Angular displacement is the angle in radians that will travel, right? So now in this merry-go-round, if you sit here, your friend sit here, you both are going to change the angle in the same amount because of that your rotational or the angular velocity for the problem will be the same. That means rotation is nothing to do with this uh, faster that you will feel that faster is coming from uh, your translational motion. Okay. Okay. So now, um, now let's take a, uh, again uh, uh, understanding about this uh, angular quantities. So uh, the rotation or rotational uh, displacement or angular displacement is the basically angle it travel in radians. We call it as the uh, angular displacement. Now radians, everybody know how to convert radians into degrees, degrees into radians, right? Because two pi radians is one full circle because it will take 360 degrees. Phi radians means 180 degrees. Phi over two radians means 90 degrees. Everybody know how to do this conversion. Okay. So now, uh, relation between uh, your displacement, that means your translational displacement and the angular displacement. This will be coming from geometry that if you need this distance L, you can calculate this L by using this radius times the theta that will give you the L. L equal R times theta. L is your translational distance that travel, translational, right? And translational displacement. Okay. And theta is your angular displacement. Okay. R is basically uh, the radius that you take on the circle. So similar to this displacement, velocity acceleration also will be able to define accordingly because we know the definition of velocity if you know the displacement, right? Because velocity is change of rate of displacement, acceleration is change of rate of velocity. Then we can definitely write down all the equations related to your angular motion. What is the first one? So now displacement will be change of the angle. We use the radius, that is angular displacement. So now if you take the displacement divided by the time, it will give you the angular velocity, similar to velocity equal delta x over delta t. Here it is delta theta over delta t because it is angular displacement. That is, we call it as the symbol omega in Greek letter. Omega. Okay, then units will be definitely radians per second. Okay, so now uh, how do we relate velocity into uh, angular velocity? We can we can directly derive this equation, but they are related by using this formula. That means your linear speed or the velocity should be equal to r times the angular speed. Okay, so now displacement, as, as we mentioned, a linear uh, displacement should be equal to R times angular displacement. Okay, so it will match up with the velocity also. And then uh, we can write the angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is delta omega over delta T, and we use the symbol alpha for that. Angular acceleration is the symbol alpha. Okay. And then you remember that radial acceleration we talk about if it is a centripetal uh, acceleration, radial acceleration is V squared over R. Then you can relate that by using omega if you want and tangential acceleration and the uh, radial acceleration, I mean tangential acceleration and the angular acceleration are related. I can write it, it in here, same formula. Uh, tangential acceleration is equal to R times alpha. So those are the relation 
in between your translational and rotational motion. Okay. So now, uh, again, that uh, the more faster, as I discussed, this is another way that you can understand because when you have different tangential velocity uh, will be happen when you have different radius. That means in the merry-go-round, if these both are traveling with the, uh, with the speed, but they have same omega, but because of the R, they have different tangential speed. That's why this one is moving faster, this one is moving slower, right? So that is another way that you can discuss about the um, writing the merry-go-round problem. How do you feel faster that and that, right? So now uh, it's uh, important that we discuss about the uh, connection between these, right? I mentioned about this connection, right? So R will be basically radius and theta is the angular displacement, omega is the angular velocity, and alpha is the angular acceleration, right? So now since this everything is rotating that you remember that the in century, uh, the circular motion problems, we discuss about how to find the period. And also we can relate the period and frequency together because period is how long it will take to complete one cycle. So you're going to do probably 20, 30 cycles and divide by 30, then you're going to take the period for one cycle. Complete in 360 degrees or complete in two phi radians will be the time it will take. That is called it as period. And then frequency will be one over period. Frequency is one over period. Okay, So frequency is one over period. Or period equal one over frequency. Both are the same. Right, so now frequency you're going to measure by using hertz. Hertz means one over second. One over second. Okay, hertz is the frequency. <clears throat> so now this frequency is related to actually uh, the this angular speed and the uh, radian conversion that by frequency is equal to uh, omega over two pi. Omega is angular velocity divided by the uh, two pi. Uh, that will give you the frequency. Okay. Okay. So now, um, after we discuss about linear speed, li linear velocity, linear displacement, linear uh, acceleration, we went through the kinematics equation for one of the sections. So now, uh, although I'm not going to solve the problems uh, mostly in this part because there is no new thing, only different is you replace in this all the quantities that you have used velocity by using omega and then acceleration by using alpha and then displacement by using feet. Other than that, there is no any difference. You just switch in your variables to the angular quantities. Then your equations will be exactly the same, but the, way, but the difference is object moving this way, you're using translational information, but if the object is keep rotating, you are using angular information that is for the uh, constant acceleration problems that we discuss. Okay. Okay, so now uh, after we uh, discuss about the kinematics, we move into the dynamics. Dynamics is basically uh, about the motion of the object relation with the force, right? So now, uh, Rotational inertia is important concept in here because the reason is uh, you remember that uh, when you do the uh, translational motion, Newton's second law, we call force equal mass time acceleration. So in that case, we thought that it is a point mass. We did not care about where the center of mass point of that object. We take the mass of the object directly times the acceleration and then we calculate the force. Right, but actually, uh, what will happen when it rotate this object? Mass distribution of this object will be effect to the rotation. So in that case, instead of taking mass, I need to take the rotational inertia or moment of inertia to the problem. Rotational inertia or the moment of inertia to the problem that is basically how mass is distributed. If it is how mass is di distributed, we call it as the rotational inertia. Okay, so now we use the symbol I for that. 
moment of inertia, excuse me. Moment of inertia that we will be able to calculate actually if it is a rigid body that in your class we are not able to calculate it because we need the calculus for that to calculate. But we are going to use some kind of uh, spherical shapes object that means cement, symmetrical object. Then uh, the moment of inertia for that object is given to you or you can find it from the table that I am going to show in your uh, textbook. So uh, you directly going to use the I value from your uh, textbook or it will be given in your problem. Okay, so but I will be able to calculate by using the integral of each mass particle of the uh, rigid body that you are talking about. So now um, uh, units of I definitely you can find because it is mass and R square, then you see that this unit will be kilograms and meter squared is the units of moment of inertia. So now I mentioned the moment of inertia is how mass distributed in the object. That will affect to the rotation, how it, how it will affect. If the moment of inertia is greater, that means you have, a, uh, you have a basically uh, more, more rotation because of that, it will going to slow down the motion. Okay, one, one, one more time. So moment of inertia is the mass distribution. If you have more moment of inertia of the object, that object basically resists the motion. It'll slow down than the other object. Simple example, you can think about the same mass, but I have a hollow shape, uh, spherical sphere, sphere, hollow shape sphere, and I have a solid sphere. So now moment of inertia of these two objects will be different because moment of inertia for the hollow sphere will be greater than the solid sphere because all the mass particle in the hollow sphere is staying all on the surface. But solid sphere, we have a mass particle inside too because of that some of the R value is less because of that it has less moment of inertia. So now if you keep these two objects together on the incline, so you will see your solid uh, sphere will reach the bottom first because it has less moment of inertia. So it has less resistance to the motion. So that is the idea about the uh, moment of inertia. Okay, so now, uh, now let's uh, discuss about the Newton second. We know that it is force equal mass time acceleration. Now, when you come to the uh, rotational motion, your acceleration will change into angular acceleration. Force is changed into rotational force, that is torque, we discussed in earlier section. And this is the I that we call it as moment of inertia. So now you have Newton's law, you can replace with these quantities to use it for your rotational dynamic. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is the table that I was talking about. You see that in the numbers, everything should be m times r squared, but your ratio or the coefficient uh, will be the difference for each case. You see, so m r squared, if it is a ring, and you have a, here, you have a solid sphere, and then I have a thin sphere in here, right? So that is a spherical shell, that means hollow cylind uh, sphere. Right, so the different uh, things will be there. So now, according to this chart, what you can see, uh, one thing is you need to understand which axis you're going to rotate. Even you will see here, I have exactly solid cylinder, but this object is going to rotate on this axis, right? This axis, but on my left side, I'm going to rotate on this axis. According to your rotational axis, your moment of inertia is different because your mass distribution will affect to that rotation. Okay, so that's uh, something important that you need to think. If you uh, roll down some object in different shapes, they have different moment of inertia in different axes. Okay, so that's one uh, concept. Okay, so now um, moment of inertia uh, will be able to calculate by using uh, calculus as I discussed. But there are two different theorems that will help us to navigate to simple problems. 
right? If you uh, go to the first theorem, this is called it as parallaxis theorem. Parallaxis theorem is more important than the other theorem that I'm going to talk in next part. But parallaxis theorem is saying that if you need to find the moment of inertia, I will say I have moment of inertia at this axis is I center of mass. That will be, I will say this is my cylinder. And I know the moment of inertia by rotating on this axis. That means in the middle, go through the vertical axis. I know that moment of inertia by using uh, my table. So now I want to find the moment of inertia with respect to the axis that I have it in this end. So now this axis and the center axis here, center axis here and this axis, I can combine to find the moment of inertia with respect to the other axis. That means if I know the moment of inertia in this axis, I will be able to calculate the moment of inertia in this axis by using the formula given to you. So this is the formula. What is this formula means? You know the center of axis moment of inertia, then your new axis moment of inertia will be able to calculate that plus mass of the object times this distance power two. So that is, we call it as the uh, parallel axis theorem because they are parallel axis, right? And second one is perpendicular axis theorem. If you know the two axis on your rotation, then you can find the third axis by using this formula. So we rarely use this one in your class, but uh, first one is important uh, to know uh, when you need to solve the problems. Okay. Okay. So now uh, we discuss about the rotational dynamic. Uh, we discuss about the rotational kinematics, right? Uh, so now we're going to move into energy conservation. Okay, so now energy conservation, we know that we had the kinetic energy, potential energy, we divide mechanical energy into two parts, potential energy, kinetic energy, and then potential energy, we divide into two parts, gravitational potential energy, and spring potential energy. We discuss those things in your energy principles. But here we have new quantity, that is we call it as rotational kinetic energy because of that rotation it has the kinetic energy that is we call it as the rotational kinetic energy now to the problem we are using for energy conservation now i need to include this energy also to your mechanical energy conservation so now this is actually same as your translational kinetic energy we discussed earlier half is still there mass need to replace by moment of inertia we need to replace by angular velocity that's the only difference okay so now kinetic energy term that you had need to add another term to that in your calculation okay so now uh, rotational kinetic energy will affect to the uh, motion as i mentioned earlier your rotation i value moment of inertia is effect to the your motion of the object. Basically, larger moment of inertia means more resistance that will slow the that will slow the motion. Right. That's why if I take this object and keep this hole in the uh, same height, if I roll them down, my uh, objects will be turned into the bottom, return to the bottom in this order. The box is first, then the sphere, then solid cylinder, then empty can, and then hoop is the last one because it has larger moment of inertia okay so now uh, it is very important that uh, you uh, watch your uh, videos in some of them are really good uh, examples that you can watch uh, on your uh, blackboard page uh, simple example that i try to explain that sliding things uh, this uh, person is showing these uh, things uh, how these slide quite works. a bit so now let's see uh, how these uh, two objects will uh, roll down because there are two objects. One is a hoop, other one is a solid cylinder. So now uh, the hoop has larger moment of inertia and solid cylinder has the less moment of inertia. Now, if I roll down these two together, definitely solid one should come first than the uh, 
who because we'll say they are same mass okay so now this guy is going to roll this down and then you're going to see which one going to reach the first our estimation is solid cylinder will go the uh, bottom first right okay let's let me see that he's okay it's almost close Okay, so that's the uh, basically because of moment of inertia. Okay, so now uh, the last concept that I'm going to talk, you remember that in your translational motion that we discuss about the uh, but, uh, conservation of momentum. Because of that, I need to move into the angular momentum. So now what is the momentum is? Momentum is property of moving matter. We can calculate by using mass and velocity. Mass time velocity that was linear moment. If object moving this way, then we can do it. But if the object is keep rotating, we need to calculate the angular momentum. So now angular momentum will be able to calculate by using linear momentum and the distance that will do the angular motion. That means this distance times the uh, uh, your linear moment, right? With the angle also, if it is 90 degrees, it is just R times P. But uh, we are not going to more, uh, talk much about that uh, because we're going to very conceptually understand it. So units here, definitely easy to understand because R is, uh, meters and this is linear momentum linear momentum we know that it is kilograms meter per second then it will give you the uh, units of the angular momentum this one, right so now go back into our uh, newton second law that we discussed during the your linear this uh, linear momentum this is the newton second law so now when you come to the angular momentum, you know what I have to do. Force I need to change into angular force or the rotational force. That's the change in here, net force to uh, torque. And then T does not change with the rotation. And then this P is linear momentum should change into angular momentum. Angular momentum we're going to use as uh, uppercase L for the total angular momentum L. At least the angular momentum. Okay, so now angular momentum uh, will be related to Newton's second law according to this formula. In addition to that, angular momentum will be able to write by using I and omega because you remember that linear momentum I write as mass and velocity. Now you're going to change this variable into L because you are working with the angular. Now I need to replace the mass with mass distribution and speed or velocity with angular velocity. Then that will be basically definition of the angular momentum. Okay, They all are related to each other. But this is like thinking uh, of analog of your uh, linear quantities into angular quantities. Okay, what we need to change uh, to you uh, to use your correct equation, formulate your new equations for the uh, new concept. That's what we are doing. Okay. Okay. So now uh, conservation. We know that uh, momentum is conserved. What we mention is your P initial equal P final. That's the linear momentum conservation. Now, similar to that, I have L I equal L final when you come to uh, angular momentum conservation. So now you can write it as by using I and omega. Okay. So now this is the best example that you can see when you uh, spin uh, on the uh, turning tables, you will be able to observe your speed change because of you changing your angular quantities that you are changing basically moment of inertia. So now we'll see that in here, your hands are spread out. That means basically what you are doing when you spread out your hand, if you have weight on your hand, that means you have mass distribution larger, right? When you have larger mass distribution, your eye is larger, okay? So now when you bring masses together, 
your mass distribution is concentrated into the center of your object because of that your i going to be lower so now i have greater i i have smaller i so now to make this uh, fix that conservation this should be this because of that my omega quantity here should be smaller but my omega quantity here should be greater okay so that's why i have it in symbol here that's why you feel faster when you bring your arms together so now this is also you can observe uh, on one of the uh, video that i have it in your blackboard page um, this is the same uh, person that showing that uh, you can see the speed actually because of the uh, because of the uh, you are distributed of the mass i hope this is correct one or not yes okay. so it's probably not the original video but yeah let 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 focus again okay so now um, this person is trying to uh, do the uh, spinning on the table right by bringing masses together and by bringing masses away from the center so now this is should be i up i greater omega is smaller omega greater i is smaller so that's the uh, that's the concept that should happen right so now let's take a look on uh, on the video Let's go back. Okay. So bring the masses together. Bring, when you bring it, it is faster. When you go up, it's slow, right? So that is the uh, that is the uh, things that we uh, discuss. <clears throat> okay. So one more time. Oops, I stopped the video. So one more time. You see, clo getting closer, slower, faster, slower, right? That's because of your uh, mass distribution uh, of the your objects or your body in that case. Okay, so now I uh, think we probably done with the uh, thing. So now this is angular momentum conservation, right? So now this has a lot of application. The spinning, you can see it, and also uh, diving. Uh, that's why you you know that you call up because it will basically uh, uh, doing the more rotation uh, that will uh, be able to do the your expected uh, diving skills in there and in addition to that long jumping definitely we have uh, that uh, bringing uh, hands and legs uh, spread out then you can uh, create more uh, moment of inertia and then you can uh, slow it down so uh, 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 that will be uh, conservation of angular momentum so that is the end of the chapter so you're going to uh, watch it and also uh, make sure that you understand and do the your problem solving session uh, attend it and also uh, use your uh, time to understand the things okay so i will stop in here